What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over another problem of round code forces round 60C7B, minimum product. So you're given four integers A, B, X, and Y. And initially A is greater than an X and B is greater than or equal to Y. And you could do the following no more than N times. You could pick, choose either A or B or decrease by one. Uh, however, as a result of this operation, A cannot be less than X, okay, and B cannot be less than Y. So now our task is to find a minimum possible product of A and B, A times B, okay? And you could do the number operations uh, no more than N times. So let me just explain this real quick again. So we are given a number integer A and B. Uh, so we have A and B, and A is greater than or equal to X, and B is greater than or equal to Y, okay? So these are numbers. So all of these are integers, right? These are all integers. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why I just do that. Okay, these are all integers, right? Um, so what can we do? Basically, we want to find the minimum product of A times B. So we want to minimize minimum of A times B, right? We want to find the minimum product of A times B, okay? Um, so what can we do? We can make a number of move, right? So we could choose either A or B and decrease it by one. Um, but we, our, our operation cannot be, our value of A cannot be less than X and our value of B cannot be less than Y. Okay. So if we could decrease A by one, so we could do like, uh, we could decrease A by one. So A decreased by one, but A cannot be less than X, right? This condition can, A cannot be less than X. Okay. So A has to stay at this condition, right? And it's the same thing as B. B, we can decrease B by one this number of times, right? We can decrease B by one uh, this number of times, but B cannot be less than Y, okay? And our job is to find a minimum of A times B. And the number of operations we could do subtracting A and subtracting B is N, okay? So we could uh, we can do no more than N, right? So we have the, the maximum number of operations we could do of subtracting one from a or subtracting one from B is N. Okay. So you might be wondering, how do you do this problem? Um, so the first thing you have to realize is that if you're going to decrease number by one, let's say I keep decreasing, I keep decreasing a by one. Okay. So if I keep decreasing a by one, that means the number of operations that B could do Originally, our to remember, our total number of operations that we could do is n, right? The number of operations we could do is n. If I decrease a by 1, so let, let's say I decrease a by 1, so a minus 1, right? The number of operations b can do now decreases by 1, right? n minus 1 now decreases by 1, right? Because we can't, we can't have more than n. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Like, if I decrease a by 1, the number of total number of operations we could do because we could do at most n now it decreases by one. For for this one for b right, for b it would decrease by one right. And if I if I decrease a again by one, so if I decrease a of minus one minus one again, then the number of operations that I could decrease b by decreases by one again. Okay, do you guys understand what I'm saying? So if based on this, the the number of operations you could do. For A, if I'm doing a certain number of operations on A, the number of operations B I could do is going to be N minus the number of operations I did on A. Do you, do you guys understand what I'm going through, right? Do you get what, what I'm saying? Because we only could keep our total value of N. N is our total number of operations we could do. Do you guys know what I mean? Know what I mean? So now we have to think clearly again, okay? We want to minimize. Let's go back to the problem. Now we want to minimize... A times B. Okay, we want to minimize A times B. So what are the two scenarios I could do to minimize A times B? I could keep decreasing A down. I'm going to keep decreasing A down, 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 until I reach the bounds of X. Okay, I'm going to keep decreasing A down until I reach the bounds of X. Okay, and once I hit X, right, that is going to be the number of times I'm decreasing A by, okay? And then I'm going to subtract that number of times from N, okay? I'm going to subtract that number of times from N. So here, if I decrease A twice, right, I'm going to subtract N that number of times, 
right? And that number of times I'm subtracting from n, that number of times, is going to be the number of times I'm going to decrease b by, okay? So if I'm, and that's just one case I could do, right? Then I could find the product of a and b and see what that gives me. But I also have another case I could do. Instead of decreasing a now, let's say I decrease b. So if I keep decreasing b down, 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 until I reach this bounds of y, until I reach this, right? What can I do at this point? What can I do? How many times can I decrease a now? Simple. It would be n num minus the number of times that I decrease by b, right? Because I only could decrease n times the number of operations I could take to decrease by 1, right? So if I'm going to do this, our end result is going to be the minimum of the number of times I'm decreasing a by, right? The absolute minimum number of times I decrease a by, right? And then I multiply by whatever value that b is. Then I compare that in the result. So I'm going to have a decrease a. So I decrease a certain number of times, right? I decrease a certain number of times, right? And then I multiply it by b. And that's going to give me a result, right? Now, I, now another case I could do is decrease b certain number of times, and I multiply by a. And I'm going to get my other result. So the minimum multiplication of a times b is going to be the minimum of both of these cases. Decrease a certain number of times multiplied by b gives me a result. Take that result, find the minimum, and then um, decrease b some number of times times a, get the result, right? And then get the minimum of both of these results, both of these results, okay? So now let's go back to go back to the problem, okay? So now because you guys, I think uh, you guys understand the gist of this problem, let's, let's clear this now. So we have a is greater than maximum degree, uh, greater than or equal to x, and b is maximum greater than or equal to y. And we could only do an operation decrease, decrease a by one, uh, or decrease b by one n number of times. Okay, so I'm gonna go explain my code on what I did. This point at this point. So let's go back here. If I'm going to decrease a certain number of times, right? Decrease a. That's gonna be the number of times I'm gonna do. I'm gonna decrease a by one. Decrease a by one. Right. My bounds it takes, the bounds it could take, I, I could only end at x, right? I only could end at x. So the maximum number of times I could do is going to be a minus x. Do you get what I'm saying? Because I'm decreasing a by 1 every time, every time, every time, decreasing a by 1. The number of operations it would take, the maximum number of operations to take to get to a to x is going to be a minus x. Right, so the number of operations this is going to take the maximum it would take would be a minus x. Okay? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Because the bounds it takes is going to be x. So I have to keep decreasing 1 into a by x. Okay? So that's what I did first. I did a bound is a minus x. Because that's going to be the number of moves it would take. Okay? Now, what am I going to do now? This is the number of times I'm decreasing a by. Right? I'm going to decrease a by this number of times I'm decreasing a by decrease, decrease, decrease. In the end, I'm going to get x, right? Because I'm, I'm decreasing a this number of times, I'm going to get x, right? But I have to compare this with n, right? Because if x, let's say x was super duper large, right? Super duper large, and it exceeds n, I can't, I can't. I can't subtract more than n, right? Like I can't, I can't do a minus x more than n. I own the maximum number of times I could do is n, right? So I have to subtract the number of operations a minus b, uh, a minus x. This is the number of times I'm subtracting one from a to get to x. I need to compare this with n, right? The minimum number of times and the number of times I could do is going to be the minimum of a minus x and n, right? Do you guys understand what I mean? Because the maximum, the, 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 it has to be the minimum, a minus x and n. Because I can, the maximum times number of operations I could do is n. So therefore, the minimum number of operations would be the minimum. Number of operations I could do is going to be the minimum of a minus x and n. Okay? Because I can't get, 
I can't get more than n, right? So that that would otherwise I go I go past the bounds that it would take the number of operations of n it would take for me. So I have to do this. So that's what I do here. I take the minimum of a minus x and n, okay, to make sure that I don't go get past n, to make sure I don't get past the number of operations of n. And now what am I going to do here? I'm going to subtract a from this. Right, my new a is going to equal to this, right? Because that's going to be the number of times that a gets decreased by, right? And then if we're decreasing one by every time, this is going to be our end result of a, right? Because we're subtracting by one every time, by one every time, right? And this would be the result of our a in the end. This equation, it's going to be the result of a over the n, okay? So now once we have our a, after getting this value of a, which I did here, we need to do b now. Right. So remember back when I said the number of operations it would take, right, is the minimum of a minus x, right, uh, a minus x, right? What is the number of times b could be, right? If I decrease, if I decrease a by one time, I'm decreasing the total, the b, my total, my b value I could decrease, decreases by one. Remember in the beginning, right? Because our total value that we have is n. If I decrease a by one, this I, my my operations I did was I I did one operation. So the number of times b could do ha, has decreased by one, right? Because that's that's the the total value of n. I can only do n operations. So if I decrease a by one, then number of times b could do decreases by one. So based on this, based on this this understanding of a minus b and n minus one, right? We could formulate an idea to get the number of times b could be decreased by. Assuming we're decreasing a this number of times, the maximum number of times we decrease a. And that would be n minus this minimum, the number of operations of a minus x. Okay? This is going to be the number of times you're going to decrease b by. Okay? Because of the boundaries. Because our, we could only decrease by n number of times, right? So b could only decrease by this, n minus minimum of a minus x and n, okay? So because of that, that's the number of times we could decrease by, right, for b. But, there is a but. Remember, we have a boundary of y. We can't get more than y. We can't. We, if we get past y, it wouldn't work, right? The number of times we decrease it would, wouldn't work. We have to have a boundary. So what do we do? We have to subtract the bounds of b and y and compare it to this number of operations that we're doing. Okay, so what do I do here? At this point, I subtracted n minus minimum bounds of b minus y and b bound. So the number of times b could do is going to be this, right? b minus this. Uh, whoops, I got to go back. It's going to be b is going to equal to b minus the minimum of this and b minus y, right? Because if I go past b minus y, if I go past b minus y, I'll go get that I would end my bounds that I'm at. But the bounds I only could stay. I could only decrease a certain number of times of y. So it has to be the minimum, right? Minimum b minus y. That's the boundaries it would take number of operations it would take. So that's why I do here is minimum of n minus minimum of a minus x and n and b minus y. And that's what our b is going to equal to. Once we have this, we just get our get our results of a times b. Okay? Once we have this, we just get our result of a times b. Okay? Now this is the first scenario. This scenario is the scenario of decreasing a the maximum number of times. Now we have to look at what happens if we decrease b, okay? Because decreasing a the maximum number of times and then multiplying by b and then decreasing b maximum number of times multiplied by a would and finding the minimum of both of those results would get us our answer. Remember our two scenarios. So now, now let's go back and decrease b. So let's think about how do we decrease b now? Well, it's the same thing pretty much. It's basically the same thing. So remember, a could is only greater than or equal to x, and b is only greater than or equal to y, and our total number of operations we could do is n of decreasing by one. So if I'm going to decrease b, 
it's basically the same thing. Um, we do, we're, we're going to subtract B minus Y. And this is going to be the number of operations we take. And we have to compare this minimum value with N. And the reason why we're doing this is that we don't get passed by N. Because if Y is super duper large, and we get passed by N, we could uh, the subtraction would be too much, right? We would get, uh, what's not allowed, the maximum number of times you could subtract is, uh, subtract by one is going to be N. So that's why we do this, okay? Minimum of B minus Y and N. And that's what our B is gonna equal to, right? This is the number of times you're subtracting by one, and we just subtract B minus this number of times, okay? This number of times. Now, um, to do A, it's gonna be the same thing. Now, um, we just do N minus this min of B minus Y and N, N minus this, right? Because this is the number of times it would take. And then we just take the minimum of the bounds of a minus x. And why do we do a minus x? Because the ma maximum number of times you could decrease by one is gonna be a minus x. We can't go lower than this, right? If we get lower than this, uh, if we get more than this, then we, the, the, we, 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 we would de a would become less than x, right? So that's why we have to do this. So then a is gonna equal to a minus this, okay? And yeah, that's basically pretty much it. Then you multiply A and B and then compare that to the first time, first result that we got. So that's what I did here. So yeah, here's the code that what I did. So I subtract A minus X. That's the number of times A could be. And I subtract B minus B minus Y, number of times B could be. And I had a copy of A and a copy of B, but that's just like, well, what I did for the different results. I decrease A the maximum number of times possible. So that's gonna be A minus X, compare the minimum of that with N. And decrease a by that number of times then here uh we decrease b that's going to be minimum of n minus this number of times so that we decrease by a because our total value that we could decrease is n so we have to do n minus that and then we compare this value with the number of times you could decrease by b which is b minus y because we can't get lower than y right so that's why we could do a minimum of that with the b minus y and then we have this then we just multiply them together okay a times b and then we do the same thing for B. We decrease uh, B the uh, maximum number of times we could decrease B, right? For the second case, we do uh, B minus Y and compare it with N, minimum of that. And then we do A, uh, it's decrease A the number of times is gonna be N minus minimum of B, uh, B minus Y and N, right? And then uh, compare that with the number of times we would do it, the minimum, which is A minus X. And then you have your value of the second case of decreasing B the maximum number of times, okay? And then after that, we just do the minimum of both of these. But the both of our results multiply, the product of both of our results. So A times B and the other scenario of A times B. And then that will get your answer. That would basically get your answer. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. And I hope I explained it well to you guys because this was, a, this was pretty difficult, a little bit hard to understand, but... It, it is what it is, though. But yeah, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later.